Okay, hello. Thanks for uh, for joining us today. Uh, my name is Matt Cohen. I'm the president and co-founder of Second Street, and we're delighted to continue to be part of the Schweiki uh, webinar series. Uh, I'm really fortunate to be joined today by Julie Foley, who's our director of affiliate success at Second Street. Um, and today we're going to really dig into uh, what a, a trend that we're seeing at Second Street in, in real expanding opportunities around reader's choice. That's been uh, something that magazines have been doing for a long time, but we're seeing uh, digital really opening up a lot of great opportunities to do it more efficiently and tap into some new revenue streams. Um, just a little bit about who we are at Second Street. We really focus in on working with media companies around online promotions, so contests and deals and email marketing and ballots and things along those lines are really our specialization. And we're really fortunate to work with over 3,000 media partners across North America. Um, and uh, and many, of them are or, uh, many of them are magazines. So um, uh, we're always delighted to, uh, uh, to work with our magazine partners. It's an expanding part of what we're doing. And, and working with over 3,000 partners really gives us a great deal of insight into what is working, and certainly ballots are one of the trends that we're seeing emerge uh, overall. When we think, though, about trends in the big macro level that are really powerful, it's certainly in the promotion space. Um, there's some data from Brell and Associates, and it shows growth in online, in online promotions uh, over the looking back about four or five years and then looking forward ahead five years to 2017. And the march forward in terms of growth of promotions has been, um, has been just enormous. Um, and it's not really surprising why. Promotions are uh, really uh, find uh, digital to be the perfect promotional medium. Um, it's really a lean forward medium where people can engage and enter contests and vote in contests and share information about themselves. Uh, they can buy deals and uh, download coupons and uh, really engage with, uh, with uh, media companies and in particular with advertisers in a big way. And so it's a huge opportunity uh, for media. But today we really want to talk a little bit about ballots and uh, what magazines generally call uh, reader's choice. Um, as I mentioned before, this is not necessarily a new area, um, something we've been doing for a long time. Uh, generally, um, it's been a great opportunity for print because ballots are natural to appear in a print publication, whether it be a magazine or a newspaper or any kind of a niche publication, um, a building a ballot and putting it in, usually about once a year, uh, to let your readers vote about the best of what you cover, whether that be a local geographic area or whether that be a special interest, has been a long mainstay uh, of print publications. They've worked terrific. There's usually uh, generous revenue uh, that comes from these uh, ballot promotions, uh, these reader choice promotions. Um, and uh, it's a great way to bring a variety of advertisers in uh, overall. They're also great from an audience perspective. Um, um, your readers love being able to hear what your, the rest of your readers think in terms of what is uh, best in your community or in your area of interest. So audience is a big part of reader's choice. Um, there are also incredible ways to get your advertisers engaged, frankly, in promoting you. Um, so a lot of uh, magazines or, um, or, or other people involved with ballots um, will we'll pass out uh, table tents or, or door decals or, or now uh, social media uh, toolkits or email toolkits to let your advertisers point people back to your website as they promote themselves, uh, campaign for themselves, uh, to be the best in your area. And, and these things have become really so big that in a lot of cases, um, it's not just about print or online anymore, but it's about actual events. Um, I'm from Rhode Island, so it's great pride. I see this terrific event that the folks at Rhode Island Magazine do uh, in Providence, where I know the mayor and the governor come to this huge gala uh, celebrating the best of Rhode Island. And it all comes from a ballot uh, in, uh, that Rhode Island Magazine puts together. So while ballots um, are terrific and Reader's Choice programs are terrific, I think anybody who's ever conducted one in the past would acknowledge that they can be challenging in some ways or traditionally been challenging. There are some pain points. Um, I'm sure for many of you this looks familiar. 
um, either your whole team or a bunch of temps or we find some magazines actually send their paper ballots out to accounting firms to help them tabulate it. But it's uh, time consuming and costly as a whole. Furthermore, some people have found ways to move this out of paper ballots and take, uh, take ballots uh, online or other things like that and feed them into an Excel spreadsheet. But um, it's kind of a little bit of Excel hell, uh, excuse the term, um, to try and manage uh, all of those write-ins and merge them in together and dedupe them and uh, get, uh, get them to line up accordingly. Um, and even when you do do that, um, generally people are using survey tools or basic web forms and part of the problem is, is that they don't necessarily give you advertising opportunities um, as you bring your audience online. And that's really missing a big digital revenue opportunity as a whole. So I'm going to turn it over to Julie Foley, who I'm thrilled to have join us. Julie's a tremendous resource in the industry to talk a little bit about how some new tools that are emerging are allowing, uh, allowing magazines to uh, work their ballots much more efficiently and open up uh, some of these new rev digital revenue streams we've been hinting at here today. Thanks, Matt. It's great to be here. Um, thanks for having me. So yeah, so here's um, an example of, of a tool that can help um, solve some of these pain points. What you see here is an example of a ballot that has um, a combination of both a seated entry and an opportunity for a write-in. Um, that's been an issue where people would like to have both, and you can normally only do either or. Um, so with this tool, you can have it open to have both seated and, um, of course, write-ins. But then when you're writing in something, so let's just say, for instance, you're writing in Applebee's, um, some people will write in Applebee's apostrophe S, Applebee's with no apostrophe, or Applebee's Bar and Grill. Um, so this tool allows you to now merge those write-ins, click on them, um, merge them together as the same write-in, um, and now they're all of those write-ins are now merged in as, as the right terminology. So um, that's a really easy way to do that. Um, and this new tool is giving people the ability to tabulate and organize, uh, um, you know, in a faster way and also offer some revenue opportunities, which is what we're going to talk about in just a second. Um, and taking something that has normally taken hours to create and then tabulate and turning that into something that only creates 30 minutes or an hour total to do, which is really exciting because, um, like Matt mentioned before, in the past these things are have very generous revenue when it comes to print. And now you're able to um, take something that has been a pain and make it not so much a pain, make it actually much, much easier to run so that you want to run more of them um, and so that you can make more money. So let's talk about the revenue opportunities around uh, ballot promotions. Um, again, like, like I said before, print has played a big role in this. Uh, a lot of revenue opportunities with print and, again, live events too, as Matt mentioned, um, that big live event they do at the Rhode Island Magazine. But there's more opportunities and there's always been this um, empty space with digital. Where do we make money online with a ballot promotion? How can we make digital revenue? And so what we're seeing now is that there's actually a lot more opportunities for digital revenue. And I'll walk through each of these for you and show you what I'm talking about. Number one is, is upgraded listings. So imagine on your ballot where you have your seated entries, the ability to click on that entry and it, and it drop down into something that looks like this. Um, a logo, an, a map, an interactive map, um, a link to their website, social buttons to follow on Twitter, um, to like on Facebook, and of course um, their, fa their website, a link to their website, and their phone number. Um, so this is something that our uh, local media companies are selling um, to put on their ballot. Um, category sponsorships. So within the after school activities category, of a ballot, you could have the uh, Velocity Dance Studio be the category sponsor of after school activities. Um, so their ad is running right there and it clicks through right to their website. Of course, online ads that go next to the ballot that you can sell to advertisers asking people to vote for them, vote for us, you know, three years in a row, best, um, best place to eat, um, come vote for us again. Um, and then, of course, your special print issue, an example of Madison Magazine, Rhode Island Magazine, big money makers for them in print, now able to capture those dollars online as well. Um, 
things in print like vote for me, thank you ads, um, you know, thank you for voting us, here's a coupon. Those are always wonderful. And then this live event. Um, and we're seeing more and more of these events pop up and events are becoming um, something that people are doing for all of their, their best of. Rolling out the red carpet and making a huge event out of, out of something um, you know, like a best of. So this is really great. Um, this is an example of a screenshot actually from a, a playbook that we've created, um, the Affiliate Success Team at Second Street on, on making money with, with uh, a re your Reader's Choice Ballot. And here's an example of what an integrated campaign could look like if you were to sell this to a sponsor that includes everything from email to your traditional print ads that you would run. Um, so uh, you should check that out too. Um, here is a case study from Metro Family Magazine in uh, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, who ran a, um, a ballot, their, their Reader's Choice, but it was family favorite, so it had a twist. Um, they are a family magazine, so they wanted to run their best of all about what is best for families, which I think is really cool. Um, so this is a 35,000 cert paper in Oklahoma City, and they sold these category sponsorships. They also had uh, online ads running along the, the right-hand rail here. But this is that after-school activities, there's their category sponsorship right there for Velocity Dance Centers. Um, also selling enhanced listings um, or upgraded listings. So best place to buy a birthday cake, Tuppies and Joe. Um, they bought an enhanced listing there. As you can see, there's their logo that's showing up um, in the voting ballot. And then they promoted it on social media. You know, we've got one hour, nominate your favorites. Um, you know, win a holiday giveaway by nominating your favorites. What's the best date night restaurant in Oklahoma City? Nominate your favorites. All of these with a short link to the ballot so that folks could come in and vote for it. Um, and so just some takeaways on this, on this niche um, ballot that they ran. It really was designed to appeal to that target audience, which was families. Um, and the businesses on the ballot could pay for those enhanced listings and category sponsorships, which they'd never been able to make digital revenue before. And um, with this opportunity now, they have the um, ability to, to make digital revenue. Um, and they also ran a fun sweeps for everyone that actually went in and voted. Um, they were entered into a sweeps to win a uh, family-friendly resort package, um, so which was really great. So they gave away a prize as an incentive to vote. And they made digital revenue, as well as, of course, the revenue on their special section that they were going to do in print. Um, this is a case study that is from a local newspaper, but I want to show you some other revenue opportunities around this ballot promotion. So just think of it in terms of your magazine. Um, this is a small market newspaper, very small newspaper, 8,500 circulation. But they've been running this best of for 12 years. Um, and so normally they run just a print ballot and they get about 2,000 votes. They, you know, 2,000 people will write it in and send it into the paper. Um, and they sell printouts around it. And then they continue to run the print ballot um, so that they don't affect any of their single copy sales. And they continue to put it in print. And they do continue to make print revenue around the vote for me ads that go around the ballot as you can see here. But they also have now booked online revenue through these ads, these upgraded listings for goods and services, like you see here, um, the pop out, um, $3,000 in revenue for those online ads. Um, a total of $60,000 in revenue for their best of special section. Um, they had um, a winner's page. So after it's over, they're displaying the winners all year long. Um, and they're selling upgraded enhanced listings on the winner's page as well to all of the winners. Um, and that is something that people go back to all year long to find out where's the best place for breakfast, where's the best place to get my oil changed. And if you go there and you have an um, upgraded listing, now people can click on you know, the egg plantation and they can like them on Facebook, they can follow them on Twitter, they can find out where they are with the interactive map, they can click through to their website. Um, and so they're booking revenue even after it's over, digital revenue. So in total, they were able to book $75,000 in revenue for this and for the first time ever were able to generate very significant online traffic. They were able to get 115,000 votes versus just the 2,000 they normally got. All of that online traffic. Um, a significant revenue increase from 2012 due to the digital revenue they were able to book, which they weren't ever able to do before. And they've planned 
niche ballots. Right now they're currently running their best of prep football. It's all about high school football, who's the best quarterback, what's the place, best place to go after the game, which is really cool um, when you think about all the niche things you can do with, um, with the voter's choice step. So um, they are more than just once a year. Um, they are, there's things to think about, so that's a good segue into talking about what, what Santa Clarita was doing. They did their once a year, you know, their metro citywide, and then they decided, wow, there's so much more opportunity around ballots. What else can we do? What else are we trying to do? Well, they're, they were launching a new vertical on their website, uh, Santa Clarita Sports, all about sports. And so they wanted to launch that ballot, and that's what they did um, with their prep football. But think about all the things that you're doing, things that you can align with. It's an example of a calendar of ballots that you could run throughout the year. Um, and here are just some real-life examples of, um, of different things you could do. So holiday, best of holiday shopping. Um, this one generated $70,000 in revenue. They do a holiday shopping guide. Um, for This is Roanoke.com. They do a holiday shopping guide every year. This year they decided they were going to do a ballot to crowdsource content um, to ask people not only where they thought was the best shopping, and then take that and put, put it in their editorial piece that they do, their print section that they do every year for holiday shopping. And it generated $70,000 in revenue. Um, sports, I mentioned sports before. Here's an example of a Notre Dame football ballot. Okay, so not only voting on teams and players, who's the best quarterback, but also voting on things like memories and places to tailgate and where to go pre and post game, everything around Notre Dame football. Um, something that people in, uh, in our office are very passionate about, the Cardinals, favorite Cardinals of all time, um, players from each decade. And this is that one I was telling you about from the Signal, their, pro, their prep football, sponsored by this Providence, Providence Health and Services, $4,000 um, for that title sponsorship there. And they're going to sell all these upgraded listings to the folks that are also in this ballot, local you know, orthopedic doctors and things like that. So this is a really great one that's very niche. Um, community events. If you have a state fair, if you have something coming up, a local race, um, race for the cure, things like that, these are really great. Getting your community involved around things that they're already passionate about that come to your community once a year. A state fair was a really great one um, as people voted on things like favorite food and favorite ride. And the best um, entry, I think, for favorite ride was the beer tent. I thought that was really fun that someone thought that the beer tent was the best ride at the fair. That would probably have been my pick, too. <laughs> um, and then parenting, which I, I gave you that example for Metro Family. Here it is again, um, a quick snapshot of what that looked like. Weddings. Talk about money-making industry there. Here's uh, Charlotte Wedding Magazine's Bow Awards, Best of Weddings, um, that they did. Um, selling digital with this as well as, of course, printing their, their great special section on the best of weddings. And then top workplaces, okay? So here's one on, um, on the best places to work. And then restaurants, so all about food, the ultimate sandwich, the best of the uh, Taste of Mystic, which is a food festival. So this is the best of that food festival, um, which is a really, really great as well. So um, there's more than just your metro or your citywide. It's more than just once a year. There's a lot of great niche ideas that can really, really drive audience and content. And uh, I'm going to turn it back over to Matt to talk about uh, the trends that we're seeing here, too. Yeah, absolutely, Julie. Great job with the, the niche. And uh, it is great that you can still do that once a year uh, overview of uh, your community or, or whatever your audience is interested in, the niche that you cover. But this ability to take that deeper dive is definitely very powerful. So I wanted to just uh, close by talking a little bit about how ballots really are, you know, something old that's really become something very new. And it, it hits on a lot of the key trends that we're seeing in the media space right now. And it doesn't get any bigger in terms of a trend than, than mobile. And particularly if you're in a local geography, um, uh, these ballots are really meant to be done and the, the majority of the time people are spending voting is on, on mobile. Because when they're out and about and they're eating a slice of pizza and 
and the restaurant is asking them to vote for them and uh, for the best uh, best pizza, or maybe they're just uh, uh, so delighted that they want to get involved themselves. Um, this is really uh, uh, reader's choice is really about what's getting out and about, and when you're out and about, now you have that mobile device in your in your pocket, and you can participate at any time. So mobile is a big part of what reader's choice is all about. Another trend is, is of course, local. And uh, you know, uh, if you're in a local community, being able to get this kind of content and let people get engaged um, is a huge, huge opportunity. And uh, this really is one of my favorites, Julie. Um, I'm a big sports fan. And when you talk about high school sports and being able to do deep dive into high school football in this way, and I know the participation on this, on this, uh, on this promotion that's going on right now is off the charts, and it doesn't surprise me because people love to get involved in what they care about most, and, and that's usually local. Another trend, of course, is social. And uh, once again, social is kind of the gas on the fire of these kinds of ballot promotions. Uh, they're a great opportunity for you as a magazine uh, to promote your own ballot and to find new ways to get the word out in very viral and social ways through Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, really Pinterest, any of the social channels. But it's also a fantastic way for your advertisers or for anybody who finds themselves on the ballot or for your individual readers to get involved campaigning uh, for, different, uh, for different categories uh, on your overall ballot. So we're just seeing an explosion of social around this. And if you're looking to be relevant socially and get people sharing um, a link back to your site to participate in the ballot, this is a great way to go about doing it. And just a lot, some additional great opportunities uh, as examples here. Next trend is really crowdsourcing content. And Julie, you mentioned this earlier, and this is really one of my favorite things I see from, uh, from ballots. Um, you know, all of us have editorial resources that are more constrained than ever before, and we all have opportunities to hear from our readers, which in many ways becomes the richest content we'll possibly have. Um, so, you know, sometimes any of us as uh, publishers or editors or journalists, we have a lot of ideas about what's best in our community, but our readers give us a huge reporting network um, that can really unearth some of the best things out there. So whether it be the State Fair, Julie, or anything else, there are these great opportunities to, to leverage your audience, leverage your readership to make you even smarter and make your reporting smarter overall. Lists is really one of the, the, the biggest trends we're seeing right now. There's a lot of talk about BuzzFeed, um, a lot of talk about lists as a whole. And as magazines, we know these have always worked. But when you go take a look at BuzzFeed and you look at this, at this page here or the next one overall, you see that um, lists are what's dominating the incredible growth that BuzzFeed and others are seeing. Um, you know, everything on this page is either a list or about cats or a list about cats. Um, and, um, but lists are the kind, of, uh, the kind of format of editorial content that just works particularly well online uh, overall. And that's really what uh, Reader's Choice programs are about. Um, it doesn't have to be BuzzFeed that's doing a list. I, I love this story. Um, it was a story that I engaged with and shared actually with my wife and, and my young sons about Syria. They're asking a bunch of questions, and it's from the Washington Post. I know when Jeff Bezos bought the Post, this is one of the stories that he's really kind of called out as, as uh, some of what he sees as the, as the future, kind of friendly but informative content uh, that, uh, that he thinks can be very effective uh, online. So anything around lists uh, is really powerful. Even the New Yorker uh, magazine, uh, not known for its brevity um, and, uh, and lists, um, has recognized this trend of listicles and lists and the power of it, and they, they have their own uh, top ten here uh, all about lists. Um, so whether it's, uh, it, it's, it's about um, uh, you know, just generating a list of the best of local shopping uh, or ultimately using uh, a ballot to help uh, feed your editorial. How many of you, you know, write stories about this all the time, like what are the top ten moments in St. Louis sports history? And the power of these ballots is to either um, put together your own list uh, through your journalists and then contrast it with maybe what your readers think, or let your readers decide what that list is, and then put your reporters to work reporting on uh, the background of, uh, and history of, of each of these lists or whatever, whatever you come up with as a whole. So lists is a very powerful trend. 
And then, of course, you've got SMB advertisers, uh, particularly in the local space. This is something we're all trying to do more and more with. We're trying to broaden the number of advertisers. As I mentioned earlier, the, the power of being able to make yourself relevant to a small business, um, to get them promoting you, and to be able to walk in the door and have a very congratulate them on being nominated for the best of, uh, best of your city, the best of your coverage, and begin a conversation about how they're promoting themselves in your ballot, um, but also how are they promoting themselves overall, we're finding it's a great lead gen opportunity to generate uh, additional revenue uh, from advertisers overall. And of course, you've got user-generated reviews. How, much of us, how many of us in the local space have Yelp in our market? Uh, how many of us in, the local, in, uh, in niche space have uh, another player that's similar? that's generating a lot of user reviews. And, and ballots give us a way to relevantly compete with the, the folks uh, at Yelp and others who have really come in nationally and uh, tried to, uh, to steer audience away from, uh, away from us uh, to these local kind of reviews that are crowdsourced. And then finally, we've talked about it a number of times, but these live events are really powerful. And I know that's something that all magazines are, are doing more and more with. And, and uh, whether it be your uh, your ballot across your entire community, uh, or one of these niche readers' choice programs that we've been sharing with you, uh, that be gives you chances to take more and more, uh, broaden your your events to a great deal, and, and generate even more revenue for them as a whole. So um, we wanted to just kind of uh, uh, close on some resources that we can provide you uh, around uh, these expanding opportunities in readers' choice. Um, at, if you go to secondstreetlab.com slash voters choice, you'll find a tons of, revenue, of uh, resources and uh, content around, uh, around ballots and, uh, and expanding on some of the things that we've spoken about today. Of course, uh, we've got a, a, a playbook that expands on many of these things as well, and you can find that playbook at that uh, same address that we, we showed you before. Yeah, Matt, and the playbook, we update that um, quite often. Um, so definitely uh, take a look at the articles that we have on, uh, on the big page for Voters' Choice and, and download that playbook and, and see those case studies of how people are making money with Voters' Choice. So there's some really good resources to check out. Absolutely. And of course, you can find us uh, uh, at any time. Um, uh, you can reach uh, Julie at Julie at SecondStreet.com, uh, all spelled out, and myself, Matt, at SecondStreet.com, uh, and we'd be delighted to help you uh, with any questions that you have um, or any, any feedback you have on, on what we've shared here today. Julie, anything in closing? Uh, no, I would just say that... Um Ballots are more than just that once-year opportunity. I think some of the most exciting ballots that we've seen have been the ones that have come from um, those niche opportunities that people are taking. Um, of course, you know, I love the sports stuff, too. The football one is, uh, is my favorite, but the holiday shopping one is a, is a close second. So think about other opportunities that you have, like the Metro family and their family ballot that they did, um, and how you can um, create something for your audience um, that they'll, they'll really resonate with them. Right. And, they, and it's hard to think of anybody who's better positioned around this than magazines uh, with the legacy of doing these kinds of programs and your passionate uh, niche audiences around it and uh, your ability to tie in um, those not only the digital revenue opportunities but those, you know, very lucrative print special sections uh, uh, that you insert into your magazine. This is just a, a fantastic opportunity as we turn to 2014. So. Uh, anyways, we appreciate you spending some time with us today. Uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. And thanks so much. Thanks, Matt.